How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about how to send data via OSC using the UDP send and receive object. And let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, let's talk about what OSC is. OSC is open sound control and it is a way of sending data across the internet to another computer. So with this technique, you can send one piece of data in your Max patch to a computer anywhere else in the world and that computer in its max patch will receive that bit of data. So it's super useful if you're trying to do something collaboratively with other people in different places. Now let's look at the UDP send object, which is going to be the beginning to send data to the other computer. And it needs two arguments. It needs the host IP address and it needs a port number to send it on. I'm going to start by typing in 127, Point zero, point zero, point 0.0.0.1 and then I'm going to say kind of arbitrarily port 9000 and you'll see we now have the UDP send object and if we create a UDP receive object and in the UDP receive we just have to define the port value so we're going to say 9000 we're going to patch a float number box uh, from the UDP receive outlet and we're going to also patch a float number box into the inlet of the UDP send and as soon as I change this value, you'll see it is now changing out of the receive outlet as well. And it's just, it's that simple. Um, if you want, we can even make this more simple and say, change the IP address to local host. This is the exact same thing. It's just saying send to the local host computer, which is the computer you are using. Um, this technique not only is very valuable, to send computer data to yourself, but to other potential applications outside of Macs that can also read OSC data. There are many, many, many different software tools that can, and you might find this to be very valuable for something you're trying to work on. So that's, that is already a very simple and very useful technique that can do a lot. And it's not just float number values that we can send, we can send any bit of data. So we can type in the word hello, and send that and you'll see we get the hello message in that message box perfect and you could do strings of sentences if you wanted and many many things if you are trying to send multiple bits of data uh say like maybe three different floating number values it's going to be hard to see that because everything is going to update to whatever the last bit is sent out so you see they're all 41, now they're all 45, and now they're all 65. If you wanted to specify and send multiple bits, you gotta add headers to your data, which is basically just like a word symbol to tag what it's for. And it's very easy to do. We can use the prepend object to do this. Um, now the correct format for OSC um, is using a backslash and then what you want to label your data as. So we're going to say, I don't know, uh, backslash P1, P2, and P3. And then we're just going to patch each of these prepend objects into the patch cord uh, from each floating number box. And I'm doing this by holding the shift button down on my keyboard and dragging the object to the patch cord and it just slides way in there. And then on the UDP receive side, if we do route dash P1, dash P2, dash P3, then we will have those uh, values coming out. Cause you see now, if we actually just quickly patch this into a message box, you'll see that's what it's sending, dash P1, 67. So then we can use the route on this end to route each one out to its own specific patch uh, cord and float number box. And you see, there we go. Now we're sending each individual bit of data. So that's also a very super helpful technique. You don't have to use the backslash in the header if you're doing things in Max. Um, it's kind of optional, but you will see very commonly with other applications that use the backslash to uh, notify that this is a header for labeling the data you are trying to send. So super useful um, to keep in mind for formatting purposes. Now, this is just sending things locally. So that's actually, that's not that bad. If you wanted to send something 
to a, another computer, you would, instead of doing local host, you would have to type in that computer's IP address. And that the IP address that you specifically want to use in this instance would be the public IP address. That is step one. Step two is you may need to set up port forwarding on your computer. Um, port forwarding is basically going to set, take all incoming messages of, of, of the OSC and it's going to route it all into one specific port number. That would be this port number that you have defined here, uh, the port 9000. When you go to set up the port forwarding stuff, you would use the value of the port that you want to receive in. So in this case, 9000. How to do that will depend specifically on your internet provider. I recommend just Googling how to set up port forwarding with your internet provider. It's not that complicated. Um, and that is already, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple concept, but it's very powerful. Uh, and yeah, I, if you did not know about these objects before, hopefully this is a nice quick intro into how to use them. Excellent. So here you can see we have two different screens. These are two different computers. I've got the IP address and port forwarding set up on my UDP send to send to this other computer, which has the UDP receive and it's set to the same port number. I am sending a text editor object into the UDP send so I can type anything I want into that box and it's going to pop up on the other computer through the route text outlet. And it's very easy and I'm just going to show that example and what should I say? I don't know. Thank you for watching. And there it is. Look, thank you for watching. So, you know, you could use this patch as it is right now just to send secret messages to somebody else on a different computer. Um, and that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments down below. I will answer them when I can. And uh, if you did learn something, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you learned something. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.